In the vast expanse of the Imperium of Man, countless souls navigate their existence, blissfully ignorant of the ethereal specter that is a space marine. The imprint of the Astatees lingers, not merely in the corporeal form, but in the intangibles that weave through the warp of legend and myth. They stand as celestial reapers, distant from the petty trifles of mortal concerns, metamorphosed into nothing less than the divine mold of the Emperor himself. Yet, beneath the layers of lore and reverence, a pulsating humanity throbs within the Astartes' essence. Amidst the tales of their celestial exploits and the fervent adoration they evoke, they remain tethered to the humanity that courses through their veins. Each legend veils the truth that despite their godlike facade, they are, at their core, still human. Beneath the imposing powered armor lies a vulnerability, chinks in their formidable shield. Their augmented biology, a testament to scientific prowess, is not impervious to the insidious advances of a festering wound, a subtle whisper of mortality. These guardians, for all their might, stand at the precipice of mortality. The strength that defines them, a force to be reckoned with, is not immune to the capricious whims of fortune. A single stroke of ill luck could render their formidable defenses useless, leaving them exposed to cosmic elements that care not for the tales of their prowess. However, amidst the celestial pantheon, one soul radiates a luminosity that transcends even divinity. A singular figure, standing alone against the backdrop of the grim, dark future. A man whose sacrificial offerings to the Imperium rival the echoes of heroes and the cataclysmic resonance of the Horus heresy. There emerges a name that resounds with the weight of countless destinies. Lord Commander Dante. Hero of the Red Scar. Uniter of the Sanguinary Brotherhood. He strides through as the living embodiment of the Five Angelic Graces. A paragon of virtue, his name reverberates with 10,000 titles and honorifics, each a testament to the undying spirit that courses through his veins. His mortal birth took place many eons ago when a child drew his first breath on the desolate second moon of Ball. His origins, like the harsh landscape that cradled him, were marked by cruelty, for he faced the arduous tribulations of a brutal childhood. Bereaved by the loss of his mother and forsaken by his father, the boy, undeterred, harbored an unwavering resolve to metamorphose into an angel or meet his demise in the pursuit of that celestial aspiration. The Salt Wastes, a desolate tableau where life had been forsaken, served as the test for the boy's destiny. Abandoned, malnourished, and withering even by the standards of Ball, his journey to the distant fortress monastery of the Blood Angels mirrored the seemingly futile quests of those who had gone before him. Under the weight of malnutrition, weakened by the very land that shaped him, the boy succumbed to the thirst that gnawed at his resilience. Far from the hallowed halls of his destination, on the precipice of despair, an enigmatic entity materialized, its origins hidden in the ancient lore of the Blood Angels. Some believe that it might be an aspect of the fallen Sanguinius himself, a divine intervention in the boy's plight. In that transformative moment, the entity, a symbolism of salvation, bestowed upon the boy the elixir of life, precious water that coursed through his parched veins, rekindling the flame of his determination. The boy, now blessed by the mysterious benefactor, emerged from the salt wastes, carrying the indomitable spirit that would propel him toward a destiny entwined with the legendary legacy of the Blood Angels. Amidst the trials that awaited him, the boy revealed no extraordinary aptitude, no dazzling prowess to set him apart. What shone brilliantly, however, was the steel of his unbreakable spirit and the moral fortitude that etched an indelible mark upon the canvas of his character. The true measure of his metal came to light when, Faced with the demand to extinguish the life of a fellow aspirant, he chose the path of mercy. Little did he know, this compassionate act would be the final litmus test that would seal his fate to his path as an Astartes. Within the sanctum of transformation, where the sacred alchemy of gene seed melded with mortal flesh, the boy's journey into a blood angel unfolded. Here, in this sacred chamber, Life and death waltzed in ethereal choreography. 
The ritual that awaited him held the promise of ascension, or the specter of demise. Many succumbed to the harrowing process, their fates sealed in the way of the Blood Angels. Yet, as the boy embarked on this perilous odyssey, his screams echoed through the hallowed halls, an agony that transcended the boundaries between waking consciousness and elusive slumber. Merging from the sarcophagus, no longer the scarred and malformed boy, but reborn as an angelic soldier of the Imperium, he bore the name Dante. Dante's journey through the ranks was not a straightforward ascent, but a climb steeped in the bitter nectar of suffering and loss. The blood and sacrifice of his brethren paved the path to his rise. The title of Lord Commander, once a distant dream, now fell on him out of necessity, a crown woven from the threads of sacrifice, marking him as the phoenix that emerged from the ashes of the Blood Angel's tribulations. In the aftermath of harrowing campaigns, the Blood Angel's brotherhood lay fractured, a shattered mosaic of resilience. Out of the 200 Astartes who survived that era, only one Commander Dante remained, the lone survivor amongst the remnants of a once mighty legion. The tides of fate conspired to anoint him as the last living captain, thrust into the reluctant role of the only viable choice for the exalted position of chapter master. There lingered an expectation, an anticipation, that Dante's ascent marked an ominous era for the Blood Angels, a prelude to their final descent into destruction. Against the backdrop of initial skepticism, he emerged as the orchestrator of the chapter's resurgence, guiding them through a renaissance that rivaled their most glorious past. In the theater of war, Dante's presence transcended mere heroism. Rising from the ranks to claim the mantle of the Imperium's most illustrious Astartes in living memory, a narrative of triumph unfolded across varied battlefields, each a fight where Dante painted his saga of prowess and resilience. His footsteps echoed across the vast expanse of the Imperium's worlds, a testament to an extraordinary lifespan that spanned over 1,500 standard years, with majority of those serving as the infamous chapter master. Throughout numerous worlds, Dante's name echoed with reverence. Yet, with all his exploits, one event rose above all, an opus of valor etched upon the very soil of his homeworld, Ball. High Fleet Leviathan, an insatiable maw of Tyranid might, loomed like an impending doom, threatening to devour not just the Blood Angel's bastion, but every essence of biomatter, a cataclysmic annihilation. Dante, the stalwart Lord Commander, rose to the challenge with fanaticism mirroring the ancient defense of the Imperial Palace by Sanguinius himself. But during the imminent conflict, Dante's true triumph unfolded before the first battle cry could pierce the air. A dance of strategic mastery. Triumph began not on the blood-soaked grounds, but in the preparation. In the hands of a lesser leader, rallying such disparate allies might have been an insurmountable feat. Yet, to Dante, a convergence occurred, one that summoned the ghosts of the past. Successor chapters, long separated from the legacy of the old Blood Angels Legion, gravitated towards his cause. A force unseen for ten millennia, a resurrection of ancient bonds, manifested in the assembly of these reborn legacies. And then, a seismic shift in the cosmic chessboard, the reborn Primarch, Robute Gilliman, emerged as an unexpected player. His arrival, a celestial intervention, tipped the scales in favor of the beleaguered defenders. High Fleet Leviathan, once an unstoppable force, was defeated in the cosmic conflict. In the aftermath of victory, the laurels of triumph bestowed a greater mantle upon the Lord Commander. With the galaxy rented asunder by a formidable rift that pierced through the very fabric of reality, the Imperium found itself cleaved in two. Half a million worlds, including the sacred ball itself, languished in the obsidian shadows, severed from the guiding light of the Astronomicon. Dante, named Regent of the Imperium Nihilus, emerged as the guardian of this twilight realm, entrusted with the defense against encroaching malevolence. Across the Imperium, a unanimous conviction echoed. The selection of Dante was not merely strategic, but ordained by destiny. His fearlessness, determination, 
and the innate genius of Anastates converged, making him an exemplar fit for the shadows that now gripped the Imperium. Even amongst the Blood Angels, Dante stood as the paragon through whom the spirit of their Primarch Sanguinius is channeled. Behind the mask, Dante conceals his face, shrouded in the death mask of Sanguinius, a visage twisted in perpetual agony, a specter designed to instill terror in the hearts of mankind's foes. This figure, untouched by the stain of bleeding wounds or the writhing agony of suffering, stands as a pillar poised to bear the weight of any burden in the impending twilight. No longer the man who emerged from the sarcophagus a millennium ago, Dante bears the weathered marks of age. The once golden strands of hair now flowing like cascading strands of silken snow, his skin etched with the tracks of weariness. His eyes, windows to a lifetime stitched with carnage and sacrifice, reflect a weariness that transcends centuries. Time's relentless march is only momentarily halted, for one thing alone anchors Dante against the onslaught of temporal erosion. Sanguinius, the Primarch, peered into the veils of the future, inscribing prophecies that reside within the hallowed vaults on Ball. In the sacred scrolls, Dante glimpses the threads of his destiny, a battle looming large, eclipsing all others. Sanguinius foresaw a golden warrior, a sentinel standing between the emperor of mankind and impending destruction. While many interpret this vision as Sanguinius's own fateful stand against Horus, Dante harbors a conviction. The golden figure is himself, and the impending day when the defense of the emperor will rest solely upon his shoulders approaches. This concludes today's chapter from the archives. Please like and subscribe if you want more. Leave a comment on which chapter we should reveal from the archives next.